and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you decided to click on this video. Yes, another video, another day in a hotel room that's not my house. So <laughs> sorry, as usual, for the, the setting here, but I got to take what time I have and use it wisely. So as the title says, today I'm going to talk about my ranking of Riley Sager's books. So I've had a, a love-hate relationship with this author. I would say it veers maybe more towards hate, but he's just like one of those, like, I don't know how to quit him. I wish I knew how to quit you. And no matter how much I dislike particular books of his, I can't stop reading them. And like, I have to read every time a new one comes out. So I don't really know how to explain that to anyone, including myself, but it just keeps happening. He actually just had a new book come out called Middle of the Night, which I will get to talking about, but I was like, um, yeah, let's do a little ranking of all of his books according to me. Now, if you're unfamiliar, Riley Sager is a thriller author. That is a pen name for the writer Todd Ritter. He's written three books under that name and another book under the name Alan Finn, and he's written eight as Riley Sager. So as I said, Riley Sager is a pen name, and it's a little controversial in the fact that he has come out and said that when he chose his pen name, he went for something that was kind of genderless. And look, I'm fully in support of like a name is just a name and like it doesn't need to have a gender, just like anything else. However, he did this so that publishers would perhaps think he was a woman and like give him opportunities, I guess, that would have been more open to women because they want to promote female authors. And so for like a very long time, I mean, he's even come out and said this, that, you know, he didn't have pronouns or a photo on his website. And like, that's just kind of shady. And I don't know, he's always written female protagonists. And so people just have some kind of weird feelings around him, um, myself included, but like, it's not stopped me from like reading his books. So do with that what you will. So I am going to start with my least favorite book and go down to my favorite book of his. So the book that I like the least is Middle of the Night. I didn't even finish it. So this was a DNF for me. This book has just come out like last week, maybe two weeks ago, and I couldn't even get through it. It's the first time he's ever written a male protagonist, so bravo to him, I guess. And it was just, I, I was just not there. We started to get into like ghosty territory and like, I don't know, that just didn't vibe with what I was looking for. That's more horror and I was led to believe this was a thriller and Sometimes when the lines get a little bit crossed, I don't know, I, I don't mind. I like reading, I guess, about ghosts, but like make them real ghosts. Like I don't want this like Scooby-Doo stuff going on where it's like, oh no, it's just a guy playing tricks on you. So, you know, I don't know if that's what happens because like I said, didn't finish it, but it felt like it was going that way and I was just not having fun. This one is about a kid who, when he's a little boy, he and his friend in the neighborhood have like a camp out in their backyard. They sleep in a tent and then the main character wakes up and he sees that there's a slit in the tent and his friend is gone and he is just disappeared. And so then he's never found and the main character, whose name I totally forget, uh, comes back to his hometown after I think getting divorced and basically is like trying to like revisit the case and stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, it sounds like a pretty basic premise and I had high hopes, but unfortunately this just like did not work for me. And I mean, maybe I would have ended up liking it better than some of the others, but the fact that I didn't even feel it necessary to finish this book tells you all you need to know. All right. Number seven on my list is Survive the Night. This came out in 2021 and it was pretty universally disliked by most people. This is set in the 90s and this girl is like trying to travel home from her college for like a break, a school break, Christmas, I don't remember. And there's like a bulletin board where people like post notes cause like the internet doesn't really, isn't popular yet. And so she sees that like someone's going the same direction as her and so they decide to ride together. But then also she thinks he's a serial killer 
but yet still decides to go with him. So it's very hard to sympathize. I mean, obviously you sympathize because you're like, I you don't want you to die. But at the same time, I'm like, girl, you could have avoided this. Like, I get it. Like, I'm sure that there was some nuance going on with like, why this was her only option and what the, the, the but like, no, I'm pretty sure like, the better option is don't get in the car with a guy you think he's a serial killer. So honestly, that woman's stupidity was just enough to make me angry. And I think that was a lot of people's issue with this book too. They're just like, how can you be so dumb? And then just keep being dumb. <laughs> it's like they stop at a rest area and she's like, oh, he's definitely a serial killer. Gets back in the car. Girl, what? Oh. Number six is The House Across the Lake. This came out in 2022. And this was another one that people either loved or hated. I feel like more people hated it. I felt stronger towards the dislike category, but like I definitely didn't hate it. So this is about like an, a woman whose husband has died and she is like the child of a famous actress. And she, I think is like kind of a child star who's like burnt out past her prime. And she's a big alcoholic. And this was like the epitome of like drunk old lady looking out the window. Well, she's not old, but you know, drunk lady looking out the window. And I'm just like, I, that's not the kind of unreliable narrator story I'm interested in. I like a story more where the main character is sort of delusional and that's why they think they're so right. Not that like we as the reader don't know how to trust them because they're always wasted. Like that's... Ugh. That's, I'm no, I don't like it. So she is sitting in this like lake house that her parents um, owned and she moves in there after the death of her husband and she starts like watching this couple in their house across the lake and it's like all made of glass, which is kind of weird. And she sort of befriends the wife and then the wife goes missing or something like that. I think that's correct. Yes, she goes missing and like, her social media accounts are like putting out posts, but it's clear that they're like fabricated. And so, you know, she has to discover what, what happened. And this one just got to a weird place. Like I'm all here for like a weird book, but this one just like went a little sideways in a way that like I wasn't expecting, but also felt me just kind of being like, ugh, like rolling my eyes because it was just, a ridiculous kind of twist that I think could have been done better if it had been marketed differently. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Number five is The Last Time I Lied. This one came out in 2018. This was his second novel written as Riley Sager. And this one follows a girl named Emma who was at this summer camp 15 years earlier and three of her cabin mates disappeared. Emma was the last one to see them alive and at that point, the whole camp was shut down because like three kids went missing, no thank you. So as an adult, she has become an artist and she uses that trauma to like, as, as inspiration for a lot of her art pieces. She ends up at one of her showings meeting the new director of the camp that's reopening and wants her to be the art teacher at the camp. So she goes back, she meets these three kids who remind her of the three girls that went missing. While she's out there, she's, you know, trying to like revisit the the crime scene, I guess, and like find out what happened to them. And then what do you know, these three girls go missing too. So I will be quite honest and tell you why this did not work for me. And my biggest issue with this was how inaccurate the descriptions of summer camp are. And maybe this is just my own experience, but I went to summer camp every year, I think from when I was nine until I was 15. So like I spent a lot of summers away from home at camp and there's so much in this that it just like doesn't make sense. There's only three people in a cat or only four people in a cabin. How big are these cabins? Like my, ca my camp had 10 and the counselors are just like not in the cabin ever. They don't even if I recall correctly, even like have counselors. Anyways, I remember that being like my biggest beef with this book, which is very much like a personal thing to me because I 
have different experience at summer camp, but I was just like, this is not, no, this is not how this works. So yeah, that kind of ruined the book for me. Other than that, I mean, maybe it's worth a reread at some point just to like confirm that I don't, that I thought that was annoying or just like confirm that I thought it was okay. <laughs> but I don't know, because that was just one of those things that like took me out of the story because I couldn't believe how like off it felt. Number four is Final Girls. This came out in 2017. This was his first book written as Riley Sager and it is a really interesting concept which I really liked. So I'm a big fan of horror movies and just like slasher films and stuff and so this really kind of takes that trope to another level. So this is about a girl named Quincy who 10 years earlier was part of a like camping trip to this like cabin with her friends and she was the only one that was a survivor because yeah everybody else was like massacred and so the media dubbed her final girl the only person she really trusts is the police officer coop who responded to the scene a man was arrested and indicted and is serving time for this this crime but Quincy has a really hard time like just moving forward she doesn't trust anyone like I said the press really starts to compare these two other final girls that had you know this has happened to them too which I guess feels kind of weird because like how often does this happen but anyways uh she does become kind of friendly with them well you know 10 years later or whatever one of them kills herself, but it seems like it may have not been a suicide, it may have been a homicide. Quincy and the other final girl, Sam, kind of become unlikely friends to try to like sort this out. Honestly, I don't really remember that much else about this book except for that. I do remember like the twist, or not even the twist, but like the, I don't know, I guess the twist. And uh, yeah, I mean, this was good. It was very, like, basic slasher book, but, like, I mean, it was a good time. Um, I would recommend it, especially if you're new to the genre, then you'll probably get more out of this. I don't know that I would like it as much if I read it now, but at the time I hadn't read very many thrillers, so it was just, like, all kind of brand new. The twists were actually, like, thrilling to me. <laughs> so, yeah, this one, it's good, but not. Number three is Home Before Dark. This came out in 2020 and I thought this was like pretty good. I can't say the biggest reason why this bothered me a little bit because of spoilers. But so this this is about a girl who, let me start over. If you've watched The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix, you've read this book like basically. I mean obviously there's differences and it's you know, whatever, but like it's pretty similar to the same plot. So this is written as like a split narrative. So first we're getting the story of this man and he moves into this big old house with his wife and his little girl Maggie and it's haunted essentially. All this weird stuff keeps happening and of course like the little girl Maggie is like being weird because kids are weird and so a lot of stuff is just kind of not feeling normal and he ends up writing a book about the experience living in this house. 25 years in the future, Maggie's father has passed away and left her this house. So she's like, oh my God, I don't want to deal with it. But she has to go and, you know, sell it, get it ready to be sold and all of that stuff. She goes up there. A lot of people in the neighborhood aren't thrilled about this book because it's gotten so much notoriety and other weird stuff is happening too <laughs> once she goes back. As an adult. So I mean while this seems like a really good interesting story I think the fact that it felt like this really really popular TV series that we'd all just watched at the time uh, kind of took something away because it felt I mean I'm sure that there was this concept had been thought of before that came out whatever but they were like kind of similar and uh, by kind of I mean a lot similar and I think that just kind of like made me be like, oh, so this is the same, but not as good. <laughs> I still, I still enjoyed it, but it did have one element that like kind of bummed me out in just a personal preference way of a way that I like stories to be told versus how they did. Again, it's a spoiler, so I'm not going to say anything, but like, you know, it's just a personal preference. Number two is The Only One Left. This came out in 2023. This I really enjoyed. This is set in the 80s. It follows a woman named Kit who is a home health aide and she's gone to be a caretaker to this woman named Lenora Hope. And she is like infamous for like murdering her 
family, her sister, her parents, I think that was it, but like, that was pretty bad. But now she's like an invalid and um, she needs a full-time caretaker and she basically, you know, can't speak, can't move, but Kit starts to like notice her kind of like doing some kind of like movement and etc. She's like, yeah, I don't know if she's actually as like frail and incapable as she seems to be. Lenora basically is like, I will tell you my story. And they like communicate with like a, a typewriter, if I remember correctly. Well, anyways, I thought this was really cool. I love books that are like a little bit set in the past. And um, this was just like really creepy and really mysterious. And I definitely did not see the big twists at the end coming. This also is like I don't want to say it's like haunted house because it's it's not really but the house is almost like a character and just looking at the cover you can see that like this is a creepy old house this is a thing and so I really just this one really stuck with me and I I don't know I think I would probably reread this one in the future it kind of veered a little more towards like a mystery than like a true true thriller until the very very end which I guess you could say about a lot of thrillers but this one is definitely feels more about like there's stuff to be solved versus like, I don't know, other thrillers. And my number one Riley Sager book is Lock Every Door. This came out in 2019 and I consider this one of my favorite thrillers of all time. So this is about a girl named Jules who is like really down on her luck. She's just lost her job and her boyfriend and her parents don't have a relationship with her. She's like living with her friend and then she sees this job posting where basically she just has to apartment sit this apartment for three months she just has to live in this apartment and like take care of it there are some weird rules like she can't bring anyone back to the apartment at all and that she shouldn't like interact with the other occupants of the building and this is like a really really fancy building in New York City and whatever so she like does start to become friends with one of the other tenants who is a doctor and he basically tells her that like the person who was last apartment sitting for this unit had gone missing and like just didn't come back. So obviously there's some like weird mystery stuff going on right there. She also makes a friend with like another apartment sitter in the building at the same time and she too goes missing. So really weird stuff happened in this building. And this, this takes a turn that like, I mean, I did not see coming and I think it was one of the most clever and like truly scary books that I had read up till this point and like I would love to read it again and kind of see if I still feel that way but like this is this is a good one I really really love this if you like more of your thrillers that kind of lean a little maybe towards horror this is definitely a book to pick up just like so creepy and chilling oh yeah I I wish I could talk about this with spoilers, but I will not. I will not do that to you guys because I want you to read this. So that is my ranking of Riley Sager's books. As you can see, we have quite a spectrum going from my like one of my favorite thrillers of all time to a book I couldn't even get myself to finish and a few there that I just absolutely hated. So I think I do end up leaning more towards disliking him, but I just can't let go of Lock Every Door and The Only One Left because I really liked both of those. And so they keep me hanging on, keep me trying, but what are you going to do? So I hope you liked this video. If you have a favorite Riley Sager book, let me know in the comments. If you want me to do any other rankings of other authors' books, let me know that in the comments too. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you would, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.